and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on take we are of course broadcasting live straight out of stockholm sweden and we do the show each and every day at 8 a.m central european time I come to you guys like an atomic clock each and every day. Today we'll be discussing something extremely significant because if you look at whale alert, it is completely wild. I don't know if we've, if we've seen anything like this in the in the past year because if you look at uh, the transactions that we're seeing, we have huge transactions, four hundred million dollars being transferred, basically transaction after transaction after transaction. All in all, you do have one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 9, basically approximately 20 of these transactions, all uh, all sending 50,000 uh, Bitcoin, 55,000 Bitcoin. And of course, if you take 55,000 times 20, you understand that somebody moved 1 million Bitcoin altogether because we have 20 transactions of approximately 50 to 55 Bitcoin. Completely insane. That is going to be the first topic that we're going to discuss. The second topic will be about Deutsche Bank because they released a new report about how they envision 2030 to be and guess what a big part of it is cryptocurrency and the fact that it may be the 21st century cash so that is why i have this title that deutsche bank is proposing that the possible possi that the possible future is that uh, cryptocurrencies are widely used and adopted and then we're going to talk about tim draper because tim draper really believes believes in bitcoin as cash not as digital gold but as cash and his prediction of 200k is not based on the halving or anything like that it's purely based on his prediction that bitcoin will be significant as uh, as cash and afterwards as always i will get into the chat we'll talk about questions and answers and all that good jazz good stuff that being said guys <clears throat> everyone welcome to the show welcome to it, another episode i see already people in the chat going wild uh, chris Kevin, Irfan, Mr. Fish, Pass, Fison, Cryptogenic, Fabrice, uh, Cortic, everyone, Bernard, Michael Golub, amazing. How are you doing? Crypto Corals, thank you for the fair Richard Hart interviews. Uh, glad you liked it. Glad you liked it. Thank you for donation. And also thank you for donation uh, YK. And also we had another donator in the past as well, but you're not longer show showing up. Yeah, it was Mosmos. Amazing. That being said, guys, let me know how you're doing. I want to wish you good morning to everyone wherever you are because crypto is global. You may be in Africa watching this and I'm in Sweden or you may be in um, Saudi Arabia or somewhere in Indonesia. Let me know which country you're from and also let me know how your bags are doing these times. Are you completely disappointed or are you able to psychologically survive this bear market? But I guess if you're here, you're not completely disappointed <laughs> because people who are completely disappointed, unfortunately, sell at, at the bottom and they basically never return. Maybe they return next time we're, we're mooning and they buy at the top, sell at the bottom again. That being said, uh, also let me know what you're drinking. Because we're drinking black coffee, as always, no milk, no sugar involved. As you can see, Bitcoin is at 1.9% today. Very good green momentum. Uh, Ethereum 1.9 as well. XRP 3.4. Congrats if you hold XRP and you're able to gain 3.4%. All in all, green movement, green day, but a bit sideways. Except for Monero, maybe 5% is quite significant in this time. 4.59 at least. Uh, looking at the big winners... We have HTrade, Mindol, Kyber Network, Enigma Energy, Engine Coin. You know, we covered Engine Coin yesterday. I had to do a whole video on Engine Coin because they do have a Microsoft collaboration. And big losers are Diamond Solve, but you cannot say that they are big losers. The market is green, everyone is happy. Everyone is doing great. I see countries in the chat, Australia, US, New Zealand. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Welcome everyone, wherever you are, whoever you are. And also guys, don't forget that we do have collaboration with Bybit. You can get $90 for free and you can long, you can short, you can do leverage, but please be very careful because leverage is dangerous. And if you are completely new to trading, you should not do leverage. So please be careful. But if you want to get $90 for free and try it out, you can use the link below. And at the end of this episode, we're going to give away academy so if you want to be in the giveaway on monday just comment what you have learned under this video you gotta watch this whole uh, video through and then just comment what you have learned and if you commented yesterday you are in the giveaway today so we will be doing that at the end of the stream 
That being said, let's talk about what is going on right now in uh, in Bitcoin, in transactions, because this is very, very significant. And uh, this is very recent as well. You can see it's only one hour ago, 51 minutes ago, and uh, somebody basically transferred 1 million in Bitcoin. And you can see that transactions are looking very similar. So it seems to be some kind of automatic uh, transaction, I would say, because it doesn't look like a natural human transaction. Because if it would be a human, you would not send 55, 800 and uh, nine. If it would be a human, you would send 55, 800 maybe, or 55, just 55,000, not 55, um, 809, and then 55, 792. Probably this is some automated uh, program script that is running, could be an institution, could be a large OTC desk, could be whatever really, because uh, your guess is as good as mine is, because uh, there are not known addresses, these addresses that are being used right now. There are many addresses that are known. For example, most of the exchanges uh, have cold wallet addresses that people have basically deduced. And if you go at, uh, on different uh, block explorers, you can see that, hey, somebody sent this transaction and this is the Binance cold wallet. So everyone knows that this is what's going on. But when it is the case that we're just seeing these huge transactions um, being sent back and forth without really knowing where they are coming from or who they're going to, it's basically impossible to say. People are speculating of course that this is maybe an exit scam by some kind of pyramid scheme maybe it is plus token that was in China. Uh, maybe it is just uh, a significant uh, position that is being liquidated on the market. Probably not. I mean, how do you liquidate th this many Bitcoin? You, you, it, it will take years for you to liquidate <laughs> all of it. Uh, but all in all, keep an eye on whale alert always. Always keep an eye on whale alert. People are speculating maybe it's the one coin scam worth 4 billion moving funds and getting ready to dump. But the thing with one coin is that they <clears throat> accepted fiat. So uh, one coin mainly has fiat. They don't have a lot of Bitcoin. Maybe they tran uh, transferred their fiat into Bitcoin, but I doubt it. I doubt that it is one coin, to be honest with you, because their scam, believe it or not, is based on people sending fiat, meaning that they are uh, they are uh, having partners in the banking space. Uh, Julius says, on Plan B Twitter, he said he was waiting for such movements as a good sign. Um, maybe, I mean, look, all in all, maybe people are getting excited. Maybe you see big institutions taking positions. Could, this could be a buy order from some big institution. Uh, absolutely. It could be a big whale entering the market and says, hey, give me 1 million Bitcoin, I will pay for it. Uh, and, and now they are receiving uh, their crypto. But at the same time, also, I, I feel that why would you make it so public? That That is what uh, I ask myself. Because if it is the case that somebody is making a big bet, a big position, at least I would try to divide it into many transactions. Because I don't want YouTubers to be speaking about my big ass transaction, like I'm doing right now, by the way. <laughs> but so if I did some significant moves, some significant buy or sell orders in the market, it's always good to try and make them seem small or divide in many transactions. Because when you have such huge transactions, now everyone is going to follow those addresses. Now everyone is going to try to put this, these addresses in the tool I showed you this uh, this tool where you can see visual transactions and you can follow money. Now, everyone's going to do that. So uh, I, I don't know if it's a good de decision, to be honest with you, but uh, that is what, uh, what is happening right now. So... Um, for, for one, it's important to realize that we do have good tools that can track it, but I think the uh, the transactions are a bit too fresh because when I try to enter them into OXT, it doesn't really work yet, but usually you need to be confirmed as a transaction in order to, to get into uh, OXT and for them to do visualization. Let me actually show you. Uh, I mean, it would be very fun to follow them. But when, when you enter the transaction, let's see, it shows up like this, but you don't get the visualization, at least yet. And then if you go to the address, yeah, it just shows uh, nothing found for this address. So it is a bit buggy, this tool, because normally when you go to an address, you get this visualization. But for now, it doesn't work. Um, which is very interesting. But <clears throat> it could be that this transaction is still so new. So I'm keeping an eye on it. And <clears throat> as soon as it is completely confirmed and uh, OXT has a visualization of it, it would be very interesting to see and follow that money. But that being said, let me know what you think about this. I mean, people are saying drug deal. Uh, people are saying all kinds of maybe Craig Wright, <laughs> Trump pulling out. Bitcoin just reached 9 billion in wealth transaction. Yeah. So all in all, important to look at on-chain activity because at the end of the day, that is where the big moves are happening like this. Whether it's good or bad, we'll see. We'll see. As you can see, Plan B thinks it's is good.
But all in all, uh, when you see big institutions coming into into crypto, uh, we might see transactions like this. But I would suspect suspect them to to uh, split up a bit more and to not make it as uh, as obvious. Uh, if they want to be uh, secret, if they want to be under the radar, maybe they don't want to be that. Um, but speaking about uh, whales, a big whale is of course Tim Draper. A big whale is in Draper and he has predicted 200k for Bitcoin for a very long time and uh, 250k, 200k and he is still bullish because uh, according to him in 2023 we would uh, we will pass this $250 mark and this is in connection to the Deutsche Bank report I will show to you very very uh, soon because they are talking about the 21st century cash basically cryptocurrencies being the 21st century cash. And while most of the narrative when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto is mainly around uh, uh, digital gold and the fact that it is a macro asset, it seems that we have forgotten where we've come from and we've come from uh, digital cash. We've come from this uh, um, community where we were so focused on digital cash. And now it seems that m most people don't really want to spend Bitcoin, which is quite natural because it's going up every year, basically. So why would you want to spend it? You don't want to be the next pizza guy who bought pizzas with uh, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars and, and so therefore whether it is cash today or in the future is difficult to say today is clearly not really used as cash because it is deflationary and people are enjoying the hodl returns in the future when the price is stable maybe people will want to spend it more but it also depends on how the whole uh, infrastructure looks like when it comes to payments. Can you really spend Bitcoin? Or is it mainly fiat that is used for spending because people still just hold hold Bitcoin and don't want to spend it and they just spend the fiat that is uh, devaluing and inflating every year. So who knows? But it's interesting to see that Tim Draper is one of the people that still believes a lot in Bitcoin as, uh, as a currency. So He's saying that I'm more confident of uh, 20, uh, 250k by 2022 or first quarter of 2023 than I am um, of the prediction of 8.5k on December 31st. So he previously he predicted 8.5k uh, this year. And also he says that his prediction is not based on halving and not on stock to flow, but purely on the, uh, on the idea that Bitcoin will capture 5% of uh, currency market. So my prediction was really based on creating enough of infrastructure for Bitcoin to get 5% market share around the world as a currency. Well, this infrastructure is not really, really growing that big when it comes to merchants, when it comes to people who accept Bitcoin, because usually merchants are excited, but then nobody wants to spend Bitcoin and really it becomes too big of a cost to implement Bitcoin uh, payments and then you need to account it and you need to keep track of it. So the the costs are basically bigger than the losses because there is mo much more administration and you need to explain to the tax authorities what the hell this is so many people have tried in 2014-15 and they're not really accepting it anymore mainly because bitcoin has seen such an amazing growth mainly because people are uh, keeping it and expecting the bitcoin to go up a lot in the near future so he continues saying that currency business today is 86 trillion. If you add crypto in 10 years from now, I think it's going to be to 120 trillion. That's a huge, huge market. And in connection to this, we also have uh, Deutsche Bank. So this is really what caught my eye today. The fact that banks are now waking up. And banks are now also seeing that crypto will be big in the future in one way or, or another. And so therefore, we do see this report ca called Concept uh, Imagine 2030, which is all about the fact that the world will change to a large extent. And they talk about many different things um, and many different issues that the world and especially Europe is facing. So for example, how Europe can uh, stop falling behind in the, <laughs> in the 2020s. We do fall behind. <laughs> China consumer de decade, this and that. <clears throat> but then on page 58, they do have the 21st century cash. Oh, hey, I see donation, 5 euro, 29 leaks. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't seen it. What is 29 leaks? Maybe maybe I can search for it in um, uh, in the Q&A and I can give you a response. Rico, thank you so much. Also, I saw another interesting comment from Fabrice. He said that you can see 
Bitcoin as inflation as well because you go from zero to 21 million BTC from thin air. Well, there, there is different uh, kind of, of inflation. So when we say that uh, Bitcoin is deflationary, it's about the value, uh, that the value is is appreciating and the value is, is growing. Uh, but yes, it is the case that numbers of Bitcoin, they go <clears throat> to 21 million. So there is there is inflation every year in Bitcoin as well. But uh, this is not really when we, when we mean that we say that Bitcoin is deflationary. And uh, too many people, they get caught up on this technicality that there are actually more Bitcoin in existence uh, until we reach 21 million. But uh, really, when we're saying deflation, we're saying that the value is uh, is uh, progressing and, and getting bigger while the value of fiat is getting uh, getting less and less and less. Uh, but so on page 58, they talk about uh, cryptocurrencies, the 21st century cash and describe that the world of payment is changing forever and also <clears throat> sorry guys i have <clears throat> some issue with the with the throat throat a and we might see news from governments from bitcoin from other cryptocurrencies and uh, they describe how this whole industry developed that uh, really before 2017 nobody took it seriously then in 2017 Bitcoin went to 20k, now everyone was paying attention, Facebook came and announced their own cryptocurrency, and um, then you do have China and everyone else now creating their own national cryptocurrency, just we, like we talked about France yesterday. And really, is it a cryptocurrency they're developing? Not really. But people are still calling it a cryptocurrency because it is digital cash. But saying digital cash would be more correct when you're descri describing a currency created by governments where everything is controlled and you don't really see an open network as Bitcoin and as other open cryptocurrencies. <clears throat> And so moving on, we do have um, a few scenarios that they describe and um, a few challenges. I think what's interesting is that they compare Bitcoin to the internet and how fast internet developed versus how fast the blockchain wallets developed. So it's not only Bitcoin, it's all blockchain wallets together. And as you can see on this chart, we are pretty close to the development of the internet when it comes to number of years since the internet and Bitcoins have been public. So right now we're approximately at 10 years and the same with internet. And people usually do not see uh, exponential moves. So I think it's very interesting that uh, Deutsche Bank is writing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and they can see this trend that is going to get exponential and, uh, and grow faster, faster and faster. But normal people who are in crypto right now, when they s see even somebody speaking about Bitcoin dominating currency or dominating gold or being this huge asset that we're, we're really expecting it to be in one way or another, many people get skeptical. Why? Because it is a bear market. Why? Because human brains are not really good at seeing exponential moves. Just like when Bitcoin went from 10k to 20k in under a week in 2017, nobody expected that because nobody really could comprehend the exponential, <clears throat> the exponential parabolic move we were seeing. So the same is actually applying to technology and technology adoption, because when you do see technologies getting adopted by the mainstream, your brain cannot comprehend how fast it will grow and how big technologies will get in, uh, in what time. Our brains usually overestimate how far we will go in the short term and then we get disappointed, we get a bubble like in 2017, but we underestimate how far we will go in the long term. It's always like that with all new technologies. And and maybe it is like that with crypto as well, that too many people today, they're seeing Bitcoin as this thing that, hey, maybe it will pump one more time that they can sell off, but they're not really thinking big enough. And those people are not really successful in the space as a whole because they don't understand the grandiosity of this industry and they don't really understand how much possibility there is for them to build businesses, to build infrastructure, but also to be part of the market. If, the, if you only think that, hey, I hope Bitcoin pumps to the next bull market and that's the end of the story, you're not thinking big enough. And uh, when I speak to people normally, they are too many of them are, are thinking in those terms that, hey, this is this thing will just pump like one more time and that's it and, and, and we're over. But they are underestimating it for sure. And this is true for all bear markets. Look, I've been through the bear market from 2013 to 2017, really started in 2000, late 2013. Uh, you got so much negativity. People don't understand anything in the bear market. They, they are very negative. Then the bull market comes around. Suddenly everyone is woke. 
everyone is preaching, everyone is Bitcoin evangelist, everyone is public speaker, motivational Bitcoin uh, adoption spreader. But then the bear market comes, comes, all of them are gone, all of them are absolutely gone. But, you know, big guys like Deutsche Bank, they understand the, the thing. So they're talking about three main issues that, that crypto has right now. So first, cryptocurrencies need to become legitimate in the eyes of governments and regulators. We'll see how that goes. I mean, depending on which governments on, uh, or regulators, many of them are already looking at Bitcoin as something legitimate. So we are partially there. Uh, that means bringing stability to the price and bringing advantage to both merchants and consumers. So th see, this is chicken and egg because uh, to get uh, stability in the price, you need to go big. You need to become a big currency. You need to get adopted. So before that, the report is basically saying that it, governments will not look at it as something legitimate, but it is chicken and egg. So uh, you need to understand that for price to be stable, the economy needs to be big. The market needs to be big. So we'll see how that goes goes but uh, right now each year if you look at the lows it is growing the market is growing the demand also is growing all in all if you don't look at the highs because obviously we do have years like 2017 and you see this big peak and where you have crazy demand and crazy uh, crazy markets ignore them just look at the very lows each year and you can see how steady everything is growing um, that is number one then they're saying that hey uh, they also must uh, allow for global reach in the payment market. To do this, alliances must be forged with key stakeholders. Mobile apps such as Apple Pay, Google Pay, card providers such as Visa and MasterCard, and retailers such as Amazon and Walmart. We are partially there with Visa and MasterCard because there are crypto-backed credit cards. Apple Pay and Google Pay, I don't know, but why do you need them at the same time? Look, you don't need to be building on the same infrastructure because uh, you don't need to use Visa's terminal. You don't need to use their uh, proof of um, uh, point of sale uh, terminals. So all in all, why do you need that at the end of the day? Uh, what you need instead is uh, people, retail investors and retail consumers understanding why it's important and starting to demand merchants to accept it. That is the only way because merchants will not accept before retail uh, uh, consumers start to demand. Because as I told you, many of them have tried to accept it in 2014, 15, didn't really see a lot of demand. So instead they need to get FOMO. They need to get FOMO and feel that at the end of the day, what's important is crypto because we're missing out on so much money. And also it's important as well to understand that maybe one of the biggest issues with crypto right now is that it's impossible to do subscription. And a lot of internet business is based on subscription. And this is actually something that we're working as well for our academy because we do have a subscription and we, we really, really need to accept crypto. And we do accept crypto for, for the yearly subscriptions. But for monthly, we either need to use token pay or some other wallet that can allow us to do crypto subscriptions and it is big i mean not be, not being able to do subscriptions is it's a big adoption uh, adoption bottleneck that i think we need to overcome but you also see many other websites that are gladly accepting Bitcoin today because PayPal has so big fees. Look, it's almost like the traditional finance space will eat itself. So therefore, we need to understand that at the end of the day, we don't really need to be collaborating with uh, Apple Pay and Google Pay, although that would help. CryptoFace, I see in the chat. Welcome, welcome CryptoFace. How is your uh, indicator doing? Uh, because I know we have some mutual friends and uh, <laughs> uh, Fabric King, for example, who is in the chat, he, he loves your indicator. Let me, by the way, know, guys, if you have uh, used CryptoFace's indicator uh, and if it is working out for you. So if these challenges can be overcome, the new eventual future of cash is at risk. That's interesting that they say that this is at risk. But new challenges would arise. For starters, it will mean basing a robust financial system entirely on electricity consumption. So look, Deutsche Bank is actually thinking maybe 20 years ahead. Maybe it will happen in 2030, which is only 10 years ahead. But really, you understand that if we're having the whole financial system being built on cryptocurrencies, the whole financial system is basically built on electricity consumption. Because proof of work is the way to go, at least for now. At least for now, there is no real alternative. We'll see how proof of stake goes with Ethereum, but all in all, 
it is proof of work. And so they continue to envision a smooth transition towards a fully dis uh, digitalized platform. The financial system needs to be ready to overcome any kind of electricity shutdown and cyber attack. See, they're even preparing. They're even preparing for the switch because yes, you gotta think about electricity shutdown and cyber attacks. So Deutsche Bank is uh, is understanding the, the future to a large extent, I would say, in a bear market. Remember, it is in a bear market. They're not publishing it at the top of the peak when everyone is speaking about crypto because big guys are in crypto all the time, every month of every year and every day of every month, they are studying and they're seeing how the world is developing, just like you and I, guys. So it's important to be working in the bear market like we're doing. So governments may increasingly need to safely store backup of citizens data in an alternative country, like Estonia is doing right now with Luxembourg. So Estonia is using Luxembourg for comprehensive backup of government data, including details of citizens and so on and so forth. And also they're talking about hacks that we do see many exchanges uh, uh, being hacked and uh, this and that. So there are some challenges, but as we look to the decade ahead, it may not be surprising if a new and mainstream cryptocurrency were to unexpectedly emerge. It is true. And then they continue talking about other topics. So guys, what do you think? What do you think? I think it is quite interesting for sure, because it is not a small movement that we are anymore. It's not a, this small underground, the computer geek movement that we're part of as it, as it was in 2011, 12 and so on and so forth. It is becoming quite significant. And to a large extent, I also think we have to thank no, thank Mark Zuckerberg for that, because with Libra, everyone now is running very quickly. We talked about France and digital euro yesterday. Today, we're talking about Deutsche Bank. Without Libra, I'm not sure they would be this uh, hurried and this worried. <laughs> but all in all, Mark Zuckerberg has really uh, showed them that if you are still, you're going to miss out. And banks have been very lazy, very slow, very comfortable, to be honest with you. Each and every year, they have been just closing their eyes hoping for crypto to go away, but it never goes away. It just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. By the way, guys, you gotta be hydrated. This is what I learned from uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, that coffee gets you dehydrated. So you gotta have real, real uh, hydration as well. Moving on to something very interesting, the fact that 30 billion dollars worth of crypto has been sitting still, sitting still and not moving anywhere uh, since 2014. And this report basically goes through different scenarios. Most probably, most probably a large portion of that money is being lost. The keys are gone or maybe it, it is hodlers that are <clears throat> that are holding. But all in all, 3.45% of the available Bitcoin supply is, uh, is sitting still with an average uh, uh, with an average of 6,500 Bitcoin. Oh, by the way, let me show it to you. Uh, so this was a report done by Decrypt. Uh, very important because you realize how strong the HODL community is and also how much people are losing their private keys. It is kind of both of them. And uh, when you have this, it is basically a donation to everyone else. When people lose their keys, it is terrible. It is a tragedy. But as Satoshi said, you can see it like a donation to everyone else because now you have basically decreased the supply of uh, of bitcoin and when the supply is decreased and and the demand is the same then the price will will go up and finally giving away academy today to quantum healing who wrote yesterday that today i learned that i can move billions of funds from Antarctica to Siberia for a fraction of dollar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we discussed it yesterday. Exactly, exactly. Email me contact at ivanontech.com and you will be added to the academy. And as always, you know, learn programming. If you're new, get get in here and uh, and learn programming. So the one I recommend is new blockchain developer or Bitcoin programming, or if you're new, just learn this. But email contact at ivanontech.com. That being said, guys, what is happening in the chat? What's happening in the chat? I have a treat for... Okay, nice. You have a treat. Warjack equals bicep workout. Exactly. Gotta, gotta work out uh, bicep. <laughs> Hodlers who bought early on. Maybe, maybe. But imagine the nerves you gotta have to not sell in 2017 and not panic sell during the bear market. So I think it's a combination because... Human nature is that we want to we we want to cash out further later uh, uh, sooner or later. 
at least a portion. But many holders, maybe it's just uh, Bitcoin holders that are so special because they're not even taking a lot of profits to 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 a large extent. So it's very interesting. If you look at this uh, at these addresses that have been completely still. But also when we're looking at addresses, we don't really know the full picture. Maybe it is just a few people who hold most of this money and they have been taking profits. But this is just uh, the portion of their stack that they have decided to keep for long term. Maybe it is like that. But we don't know that because looking at the addresses, you don't get that information how do you get so swole uh ivan i i now i do strong lift five times five uh, three times a week just google strong lift five times five uh but thanks thanks when new ethereum course at academy very soon uh, in the f following days uh, philip will drop the new course it will be very very soon uh, and then we have another ethereum course also coming out so we do have a uh, more in-depth courses uh, on ethereum coming out basically what is it? It's Friday now? Early next week. Early next week, I hope it will be out. Uh, at least uh, that is the indication I get from, from Philip. So he is focusing on this new course. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think it's going to be very soon. So keep an eye on the Academy. Holding Bitcoin since 2019. Greetings, Ivan from San Francisco. Nice. Shout out to San Francisco. Uh, did you look at uh, KRS? Uh, uh, where did you put it? You just said you have a treat here. Uh, I, there is no link. 19.9% uh, uh, is not. Uh, stop eating chicken. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't eat a lot of chicken. I, I eat steak. As I told you in the... <laughs> somebody made this meme about sushi, about pizza and about steak. But chicken sometimes. Chicken sometimes. Um... Uh, well alert update these transactions are very likely change transactions we will reduce the amount of this being shown uh-huh all right let's see let's see let's see let's see the transactions are very likely change transactions we will reduce amount of them being shown basically people sending back to to themselves uh but why would you do that? Sometimes the coin... I mean, yes, you need to spend, spend full UTXOs. And when your UTXO is larger than the one you're w wanting to pay, then you need to send back to yourself. Uh, but uh, why would you... Interesting. I, I have to study this a bit more. Uh, I have to study this a bit more. Because usually change, tra change transaction is when you have a UTXO that you want to spend, but it's too big to uh, um, compared to what you want to send. So then you, your UTXO will be split in, into the UTXO that you're sending and then you have some change back. Uh, but yeah, this kind of change is, uh, it's good to have this kind of change, I can tell you that. <laughs> Th then you're having good problems. Change is automatic, yeah. So your wallet will do the change for you. What percentage of, uh, of your investment portfolio is in uh, cryptocurrency? To be honest with you, it varies. But right now I'm doing, uh, I'm doing DCA, so uh, dollar cost average. And uh, look, I have uh, crypto, I have uh, stocks. I also, I also look at real estate and all in all to tell exactly percentage, it's, uh, it's uh, impossible for me right now. But it is a significant uh, percentage. And also you need to realize that it, we're in the bear market. So it's good to have some uh, uh, some funds to accumulate. And don't uh, I don't take big positions. Like I tell you on this, on this channel, guys, that uh, I don't want to make a market decision. Hey, I'm going in at this point. And then uh, because we're so volatile, it can go either way, basically, in the short term. So for me, it's way more comfortable to do DCA. Uh, and uh, this is what uh, what the plan is. Uh, now, we might be mooning very soon, and then it means that if you're DCAing, you have missed out on the gains, on the maximum gains. But that is not uh, not the point. It's about risk and it's about uh, uh, spreading it as well. Uh, gold, silver. I don't have uh, physical gold, unfortunately. No, not yet. Uh, but uh, but I have friends who, who do. But for me, it's uh, how the heck will I store it? That is the, the that is the big issue. But yes, I mean, maybe bullion is the way to go. Let me know if you have it. But I don't have physical gold uh, right now. Uh, Ivan, have you read this article about uh, 2030, about hyper-Bitcoinization? Uh, well, I've, I've seen the term hyper-Bitcoinization, but uh, this exact one... That suddenly everyone will go to to Bitcoin. We'll see. Or is it BCH? Because this is Bitcoin.com. <laughs> Maybe it's Bitcoin guys they're talking about. Uh, let's see. 
I'm in crypto since uh, 2015, up, awesome, 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 awesome. This is the stories that are really, uh, really uh, inspiring. Ivan, thoughts on voice. They have released the date for beta. What are your expectations? Uh, I had big expectations. Then I had the entry with Dan Larimer and uh, basically I, I, I thought they would invent some new innovative way to do KYC, but it seems to be uh, images and you need to have KYC to use that app, not like documents and, uh, and you need to send in your passport, but you need to verify that you are a person. So we'll see. I'm excited. I'm excited for the social network, but I want to see it in action. Um, but the way he described it, it seems to me a bit, bit uh, too much friction to use it, to start using it because you need to so, uh, send in the pictures and, uh, and you have this consensus. So yeah. Ivan, if you don't have physical gold, you don't have gold. You can say that. You can say that. Uh, physical is better than UK vaults. But at the same time, um, you got to find out a way to store it. That, that, that is it. Or maybe you have just a bit of gold, like a few, you know, coins or something. But uh, if you are investing significantly, then having real gold, you, you got to trust either you, you have bullion or you, you have it in a, in a vault yourself, but then you're paying huge fees for that. that. That's an important thing to realize that usually when you store gold, they take a percentage of, um, uh, of your, of your uh, uh, value that you have there. So you got to think it through for sure. I want to think Hex and what do you think uh, uh, I haven't seen Sunny's videos for for some time but uh, so I'm not sure what you mean about that what do you think about Hex I've already told you guys uh, watch the video from yesterday uh, personally I I don't have Hex but I think it's very interesting how <laughs> how Richard has launched it and how he has generated so much retail demand in this bear market so I think in that way he's done a good job but uh, look it it is like he says it it works so I I wouldn't call it a scam is it a scam no because uh, he says that hey you you send ether you get Hex or you have Bitcoin you get Hex and then if you stake you get more Hex now if that gets you excited then uh, feel free to use it. To me, it's not very interesting. Like I've been saying that, but also I realized that I'm not the one deciding, the market will decide. I mean, if people want to send in their ether, get hex and then get more hex by staking hex, not get more ether and not get more BTC, but just get more hex by staking hex, uh, then awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, but because it is, you get more hex when you stake hex. To me, it's not very interesting. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It's all about the market value. I mean, yes, if hex is liquid, it has, is it's listed on exchanges, and you get more hex. Amazing. Then you can sell it. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> but look, man, three four million dollars in a bear market. It's uh, it's amazing that that Richard has been able to generate that, and you realize how. Uh, how you have to study that because it's uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. Look at what Richard has done the few weeks before the release of Hex. How he has been hustling every day on YouTube and spreading the word. To be honest with you, I learned a lot about marketing. So Hex for me, I don't really care about the coin, but I do care a lot, a lot, a lot about marketing portion of that. And the fact that you guys are asking me still each and every day about Hex is just a proof of that. It's proof of marketing. It's proof that people are talking about it. And what's interesting is that when people are talking trash about Hex, in reality, they are spreading Hex, like Tone Ways and all of the other guys that are uh, that are trashing Hex, uh, you realize that they are actually pumping it. And um, I thought it was interesting because Richard said that when he talked about the Craig Wright. Because when people bash and they trash Craig Wright, uh, it doesn't matter because Bitcoin SV is still top 10 coins. So Craig Wright is really the uh, the leader of a top 10 cryptocurrency on CoinMarketCap, meaning that it is, uh, in one way, it has better metrics than most cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin SV. So when you have people uh, accusing each other, hey, this is a scam, this is not a scam, doesn't matter because number one, everyone in crypto has been called scammer at one point or another. Tone has also been called a scammer. Uh, you look at anyone, any YouTuber, they, they have been called scammers. I have been called a scammer. Everyone is called a scammer. If you are in this space and you do something and people know you, you are a scammer according to someone. All projects are scams. Bitcoin is a scam according to someone. Ethereum is a scam according to someone. Uh, so when you hear the word scam, it, it means absolutely nothing today because even Bitcoin is seen as a scam by many people 
people in the traditional finance space. And then you have Ethereum seen as a scam uh, from Bitcoin maximalistic uh, as, uh, front. So what is scam, not a scam? Very difficult to say. Uh, and uh, it's, the world is not black and white. Uh, why don't you make live stream at 12 p.m. Europe once everyone in America is from Canada or in their bed, because I, I like 8 a.m. I do the stream, then I have the whole day in front of me. But uh, also, it would be maybe better to do it a bit later to get both the US and Europe, because now it's mainly like Europe and Africa. But we do have real fighters from the US. It's amazing to see Michael Golb, Sherry and others. So it's amazing to have you here even from the US, because I know it's late. I know it's late. And by the way, guys, follow me on TikTok. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> Find the link below for my TikTok. I have just opened it up and I will be releasing a new video per day. Only educational, 15 second educational video. So ch check it out, check it out. Calling things a scam is a Exactly, exactly. <laughs> me too, kind of rite of passage to be called a scammer. Exactly, uh, absolutely true. I claim my free hex, I can't lose. The worst thing happen is that I... Exactly, exactly. Uh, but I think most people are upset that Richard doesn't say who owns the Ethereum address. Uh, but to be honest with you, like, who who do you think owns it? If you, if you are honest with yourself, who do you think owns it? Uh, I, I don't know for sure, but to me it's quite clear it is Richard. But uh, it's just my opinion. And I think that is what people get, up, get upset about. I have nothing against the fact that, you know, if people are sending you $3 million and you have generated the demand for hex and the people want to pay you that, good for you. To be honest, I have zero problems with that. If there is a demand for something, you're selling your, your thing and people want to pay you. And you, have, by the way, you need to realize he spent money on auditing, he spent money on developers. So you make an investment, obviously you want to return. But I think that is what people are mostly upset about. But uh, he doesn't want to say whether he owns it, <laughs> he owns it or not. But, you know, people getting $3 million for a project, I have no problems with that. No, zero problem. Uh, because you realize how little that is uh, if you compare it to, to the real you know the real races we've seen in the in the past it's it's not that big to be honest with you but it is from retail it is from retail so that is impressive because retail is dead when it comes to project to a large extent but sometimes when you're good at marketing like richard you're still able to get good results but we'll see how it goes with the by the way what's interesting is that now i've watched the interview with tone ways uh, and um, and the, the lawyers, Tom Ways, Richard. Uh, and that was very interesting because, uh, let's see, is it this one? This one is the one that doesn't work, but there's one that did work yesterday. I watched uh, a big part of this one. Here's a lawyer that explains to Richard why he might be in trouble f uh, from the SEC. So I think that is also interesting to take a look at. But anyway, guys. Thank you so much for being he here once again. Thank you so much for uh, for contributing to the stream today again. It has been amazing times. And uh, that being said, smash the like. Uh, I just want to respond to one thing. Who says here? Ivan, your knowledge in law is limited. Hence, you won't understand the reason behind not... Uh, uh, well, I, I get the reason, but uh, look at uh, look at this uh, stream with a real real lawyer. I mean, Richard says that hey, uh, I don't want to I don't want to um, trigger how we test, but will it really matter? We'll see, we'll see. But to say that hey, your knowledge in law is limited, man, are you a lawyer? Uh, who, who are you to tell me that my knowledge in law is limited? Go watch a real lawyer instead. But anyway, like I have nothing against hex. That, that is, I, I get so many hex uh, supporters in the, in the chat saying that I don't understand DeFi and therefore I'm not excited about hex, or I don't understand law, therefore I don't understand why Bitcoin, why um, uh, Richard is not. Uh, man, uh, go, go educate yourself. Like uh, I don't know, maybe that's that's the trait of Richard that that the followers of hex get that they think they're smarter than everyone else. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, and you know, big love to all hex supporters. I'm just I'm. I'm just uh, telling you that uh, you, the way you express yourself, it's irritating, but I still love you. Still love you. Big shout out to you. Big shout out to the Hex family. That being said, see you all uh, tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. It will be Monday. Monday, 8 a.m. As always, smash the like, smash the bell, and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.